I think uh, the pastries look good. We're going to try something from here. This was designed by, uh, I want to say, an Italian architect. Look at this wonderful place, Fonda. This place is 100% absolutely packed. We're not even going to be able to get out that way. Welcome back, everyone. Buenos Aires, Argentina. We are out today on a Sunday morning. And as you can see, Sunday morning, the streets are pretty empty. Not a lot of places open on a Sunday morning in Buenos Aires, but one of the places that is for sure open on a Sunday morning in Buenos Aires is this place right here, the historic Mercado San Telmo. San Telmo Market. This place is over 100 years old. It's super famous. There's all kinds of uh, shops and cafes and all kinds of delicious goodies inside there. So let's go check it out. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's going to help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video. Enjoy. So the market's been here for more than 100 years. 1897 it was first opened. This beautiful old building <clears throat> reminds me a lot of uh, Mercado Central in uh, Santiago, in Chile, where we visited. Very beautiful. Lots of shops. A lot of these uh, like non-food related shops are not open yet, but they will be opening up soon. I wanted to get here a little bit early because this area where the food is, the coffee and the pastries and all the delicious stuff, this place gets super, super busy, especially on a Sunday. And it's about to get super busy, like within the next probably hour or so. There's tons of people like uh, that I could see out on the street in the surrounding blocks, just sort of like walking towards this place. <clears throat> and because nothing else is really open now uh, out on the streets in this neighborhood, you can tell where they're going. They're all coming here. So like I said, this place is about to get uh, super, super busy. The area here where all the restaurants and the cafes are is already super lively, as you can tell. You can hear everything. And this market is not like insanely big. It's pretty big though. And there is a lot of delicious food around here and I can't decide exactly what it is I want to eat because I want to eat all of it. And that is the biggest problem with Argentina in general. The food is delicious and there's tons of it. There's tons of it, and it's everywhere. And there's all different kinds, and you want to eat all of it. And if you do that, you're gonna end up being like 500 pounds, which, I don't know, might be worth it, honestly. Because, man, look at this. Look at these tarts. Look at these sandwiches. Look at these pastries. You know you want to eat all of it. Yeah, so this, this market, San Telmo Market, is sort of known to be a foodie paradise because of its multitude of food options. And uh, like I said, I've never visited here before. Came to San Telmo, the neighborhood, uh, in a previous video the last time we were here in Argentina, and uh, didn't get a chance to visit this market. But man, I'm glad we came. And pretty soon we're gonna have to find a place to sit <clears throat> and a restaurant to get ourselves like a little coffee, maybe a pastry or something, just to start off. Because like I said, this place is gonna get super, super busy. It's already starting to get busy and it's gonna be like packed with people. By the time late morning rolls around, this is gonna be super packed. Anyway, let's find a nice place. Let's get ourselves a coffee and uh, like some pastries and uh, we'll, we'll have a little, a little breakfast and then uh, afterwards we'll explore a little bit more because by then hopefully a lot more of these places are going to be open. There'll be a lot more people in here to be like super lively and uh, we'll check it all out. This is the place, Merci. I think uh, the pastries look good. We're going to try something from here. A nice little seating area we can sit down in. Sitting down in the little seating area here for Merci Cafe, waiting for our delicious breakfast to come. And here it is, a delicious 
a giant croissant that they served us along with cafe con leche, of course, and we got a mineral water. When I ordered a bottle of water, it came in a glass bottle and the guy came with a bottle opener to pop it open. Very, very fancy. Anyway, uh, this was our breakfast. Well, that was very, very good. Place is starting to get uh, busier and busier. Now, while we were having our uh, delicious pastry and our coffee, I was doing a little reading about uh, the market here, it's on Delamo. And uh, 1897, of course, like I mentioned, is when this place was, uh, was originally built, but, and uh, originally opened. But when uh, they needed to expand, they expanded out in 1930. So the original part is like this part right here that we're in. This was designed by, a, I want to say an Italian architect. Uh, I don't remember his name exactly. Maybe Italian Argentine. That's likely, uh, honestly, given the fact that uh, there were a lot of Italian Argentines um, in the late 1800s here in Argentina. And there still are now. Definitely looks like a very late 1800s, you know, turn of the century design. But as you can see, starting to get starting to get busy. What I was saying was this part over here, like where the uh, vegetables and a lot of the uh, restaurants are, the part that faces um, Bolivar Street, which is like just over on this side, this part is the old part of the market. And because like it's still a functioning market with vegetable stands where people come buy vegetables, butcher shops where people come and get their meat, uh, it's also like a major, major tourist attraction because this neighborhood, San Telmo, is a big, big tourist neighborhood. A lot of, uh, a lot of tourists, when they come to Buenos Aires, this is one of the neighborhoods where they stay. And so these sections over here that are like the extensions this area over here, this part that extends out, that's like the part that was added in 1930. And that's where like most of the tourist stuff is, the gift shops, um, like souvenir shops and little trinkets and stuff like that. There's another wing that was extended in 1930 out to Defensa Street over here. So this is part of the new market too, up here. And uh, up here, of course, also like more, more touristy stuff, more souvenir shops, things like that over here, right? You could buy like leather, all different, different kinds of like leather purses, wallets, and things like that. And it looks like they're doing a little bit of like construction and work here. New cement or new concrete. I wanna walk back down into the food area um, my goal is to uh, stay here long enough that uh, I start to get hungry again so I can eat more food. How's that sound for a goal? I think that sounds like a pretty good goal. Mainly because we got like, you know, pastry, uh, morning breakfast food, and I want to try more like, you know, choripan sandwich, uh, maybe like lunch, lunch type food. So basically, we just have to like wait until like the absolute earliest that it's socially acceptable to like start ordering lunch and then we're gonna do that. A lot of these places um, that I think are like more lunch type places, they aren't really open yet. Um, and so we, we may have to wait a little bit, but you can see already like it's starting to get way, way busier and it's still early morning and not everything's even open yet. And it's starting to get busier. Now, the interesting thing was when we were in the cafe, like, um, like I mentioned, this is a very, like, touristy neighborhood. A lot of tourists come here, and a lot of tourists come and visit this market. So when we were in that cafe, it's like, I heard another group of people that were speaking English. There were people that were speaking Portuguese. There were people that were speaking French. Um, of course, there were people who were speaking Spanish as well. But um, I, I would say, for, for the first time, uh, I was not the person who had the worst Spanish skills in that little cafe area. And I felt pretty good about that, honestly, um, because some of the people that were in there were having a lot of trouble trying to order. And they were trying to order in like 
broken English, and the uh, the waiter had like some broken English too. So it's quite uh, quite proud of myself, but it was also very uh, very interesting, and it made me, made me realize, of course, like remember basically that like oh, this is a very it's a very touristy uh, spot, and it's a very touristy neighborhood. So you see like people that are like from all over the place, all over the world coming and visiting this place because it's like one of these like you have to visit places when you come to uh to Buenos Aires and of course like like an idiot the first time I came to Buenos Aires I didn't come and visit it but we're taking care of that today look at this wonderful place Fonda Beautiful, delicious, delicious food being prepared inside. And right here outside, look at this thing. A giant, giant leg of meat. Pasta and delicious empanadas. prepping all the empanadas and the tortillas. Of course, tortillas. Different different than the uh, tortillas that you know. The tortillas that you know if you're like from the United States, you only know Mexican tortillas. I've introduced you in a previous video to like uh, the tortillas in Ecuador, which are very, very different. And uh, these tortillas that they would have here in uh, Argentina, also very different. It's more like a, a large uh, sort of like a potato and egg omelet situation. They're really good. They're very, very good. But they're not what you would think if you were coming from the United States and you've heard the word tortillas. This place looks really delicious. And this may actually have to be the place that we go to get, uh, to get a little bit of lunch. But we're going to have to do that a little bit later. Not just Argentine food options here. This place is like a, looks like a pan-Asian kind of a restaurant. I think they have Chinese food. Uh, yeah, they have Chinese food, Vietnamese, Thai. This is something that you see, um, I've noticed in South America that there are a lot of like pan-Asian places where they serve um, like types of food from different Asian countries. I think just because basically like there are Asian um, diasporas in Latin America and South America for sure. But sometimes there's not like a very, very, very large Asian diaspora. And a lot of people don't have like a lot of um, exposure to specific foods from specific like Asian countries. So to have like a only Vietnamese restaurant, there may not be like the demand for that. But if you have like a Chinese restaurant that is, you know, something that like people around here are already familiar with and then you put some Vietnamese stuff on the menu as well you might be able to sell that for sure anyway delicious deli here with spices hot sauces wines another kind of fancy looking restaurant over here Ooh, yes very Argentine uh, style asado here beef de, beef de chorizo ojo de bife Bife. Ojo de bife, by the way, if you're wondering something about Argentine um, barbecue that's a little confusing if you're from the United States, the cuts are all like uh, not only named differently than they would be in the United States, but they have different cuts. They have actually different cuts of meat that are popular um, here for beef. So, like, uh, they, have them, they have them translated in English here because it's a you know, touristy spot, but like, bife de chorizo is the, like a strip loin and ojo de bife is like a, a ribeye. They also have a, a vacio, which is one of my favorites. That's like a flank steak, but it's cut in a way different than the way you would get flank steak normally in the, the United States. I think it's really delicious. That may also be a place that we have to go to get uh, to get our, uh, our lunch because man, look at this meat. Another thing about Argentine beef, um, it is like not factory farmed in the way that it is, you know, fed corn and whatnot in the way that it is in the United States. They have grass-fed beef, 
that's raised, you know, out on the range, essentially. And uh, it's not aged either. So you get a very different kind of a flavor uh, from the beef because it's fresh. It's very interesting and it's uh, something that like you, you do find in certain places in the United States, but not often. In the United States, most places, they age the beef. Another thing to note about Argentine beef is uh, in Argentina, most people prefer their, uh, their steaks and stuff well done. And so a lot of the times, that's how they'll cook it if you don't specify otherwise. Like the default will just be they'll bring it to you well done. If you don't like well done steak, and a lot of people in the United States don't, uh, then you have to like specify. If you want it to be medium rare or rare, you have to say jugoso, which means juicy. And then they'll bring it to you jugoso, like medium rare. Looks like some of the touristy stalls are starting to open up, the gift shops and whatnot. And of course, this place is getting busier and busier by the minute. Now, like, at the height of, uh, of the day, like, probably in the, like, early afternoon, this place will be, like, completely full. Every single stall, every single seat, completely full, especially on a Sunday like today. This may have to be the place. This place is called Chorepaneria. They specialize in chorepanes. They have all different kinds of chorepanes. And it looks like they're just opening up. I can see the chorepanes on the grill. I can see the chorizos on the grill. They're just starting. We may have to wait a little bit until everything's ready, but I think this is the spot. So this actually was the spot, but it wasn't actually open for another maybe 45 minutes or so. But they let me sit here, which is great. They served me a beer while I was waiting, a delicious Imperio, and uh, it was good that we got there actually early because by the time they actually started serving chorizo, uh, well, it was completely packed. I mean, completely packed. And there was not a uh, seat and everybody was waiting in line to get a seat, so I'm glad we got there early. And this was the delicious choripan that we got. We decided to go with just a choripan, a basic choripan. So it's just choripan with chimichurri on top and it is delicious. Smoky from the grill. Um, salty, the chorty ponds are always very salty and they have the delicious chimichurri on top. Went really, really well with the, uh, the beer that we had. We actually had another beer. And uh, if you're interested in this place, you can check out their menu by scanning this QR code right here and you can dream about all the delicious chorty panes that you could be eating. We ate this one and it was wonderful. Finished our delicious chorizo, and that was really, really good, no joke. And as you can see, as I predicted earlier, by lunchtime, late afternoon, this place is 100% absolutely packed. We're not even gonna be able to get out that way. But we're gonna try. Super lively on a Sunday, lots of stuff going on, but one of the other good things is, out on the street, which we're going to right now, uh, the street vendors have like a street fair that runs along uh, Defensa Street. Calle Defensa, Avenida Defensa. Anyway, it's out uh, on the like east side of the indoor market and it runs from Plaza Dorego, which is actually a plaza that we visited the last time we were here in Argentina back in the summer. Um, plaza Dorego, it runs to the north along Plaza Def or, um, Defensa Street all the way up to uh, Plaza de Mayo where uh, the Casa Rosada is, and the President is, and San Martin's tomb is, and all those things. But anyway, along the street, it runs the whole way there. And uh, I think before we go and check that out, I gotta find a bathroom, because, well, I drank that beer, and if we're gonna go take a long walk along Plaza Defensa for like 10 or 11 blocks, I wanna go to the bathroom first. But now you can see, in the early afternoon, all these shops with souvenirs and whatnot down here in the sort of like east wing of the market are all open anyway let's go find a bathroom head back out to the street check out the street vendors head up to plaza de mayo and then uh then we'll see we'll see what we see all right this place is absolutely packed even just trying to find a bathroom is like a major major issue so i think we're gonna head out out here through the uh, D 
the east wing here out to uh, Avenida Defensa or Calle Defensa. We're going to head out and see what's out on the street. And maybe out there we'll be able to find a place where we can go to the bathroom. Hopefully we will. But if we don't, whatever. We're an adult. We can hold it, right? Anyway, look at this place. Super packed. And this was basically just like, this developed in the last, you know, uh, maybe 45 minutes or an hour. I would recommend if you decide to come here and you want to get lunch, um, I'd honestly recommend doing, especially if you're on a Sunday, I'd recommend doing what I did. Just basically like, come here right when it opens, around 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. It opens at 9. Get here between 9 and 10 when it's not super busy. Find a little cafe. Get like a pastry and uh, coffee or something. Then, like, wait here, you know? Wait here for an hour, or an hour and a half or so. If you want to go to that Chore Panaria or basically any of these other restaurants that open usually around noon um, for lunch, you should probably, like, sit down and do what I did. Sit down at 11.15 uh, and just be like, oh, I'll just wait. That's what I did. That Chore Panaria, there were open seats, um, but only a few left by 11.15. So when I sat down, I just said, you know, I asked them when, when it was open. They said 12. I said, oh, I'll just wait here. And they said, yeah, no problem. And uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's a damn good idea. That's what you should do. If you really want to, um, if you really want to be able to, like, get a seat at one of these places, that's what you should do. Because, like, this place so busy by now and out here in the street. I mean, look, you remember the beginning of the video, what the street looked like? Well, here's a few hours later what the street looks like. And uh, as you can see out here on Defensa Street, all the way up to uh, Plaza de Mayo, you can see all the way out there, there's just uh, street vendors lining the street and there's just tons of people. So be prepared, better to come early and uh, let's check out what's going on out here because like, especially a little further up, I want to see, there looks like there's a lot of street vendor stalls open a lot of um, a lot of cool stuff to see let's check it out so there are stores open of course along here as well and now up here we start to get into the street vendor sections not just on Defensa Street here but also like down the side streets too all the different street vendors that have opened up selling uh, all kinds of different stuff Let's keep going. I think we're gonna walk all the way up to Plaza de Mayo. But it looks like right here, there is a tango show. This, of course, is something that you will see in many places. Especially around here in San Telmo, there's actually a bunch of tango uh, schools and tango um, theaters as well. I'm gonna sneak across here and also gonna give these Performers a little cash. Lovely tango performance. Oh, there's a whole antique mall in here. Actually, you know what? I'll just poke in real quick. Real quick. We'll go in here, get off the street a little bit, see little dogs walking around in sweaters, and check out the, uh, the antiques they have here. Oh, wow, cool. All these old posters. Super cool. This is a cool little find, actually. A little cool, cool antique mall. Anyway, one th one thing uh, you got to be very very aware of in a situation like this, if you're visiting San Telmo Market on a Sunday, and you're walking out in the street, you're walking through the market, and everything like you do have to be careful about pickpockets because um, you know, like any place that you're going to go in a big city where there's going to be a lot of tourists, like a high tourist area with a lot of foot traffic, lots of people um, in a very, very uh, sort of like a tight space, like a street or a market, uh, definitely watch out. Watch out for pickpockets. Be careful. Y'all know from previous videos that I love, I love old planes. Check out all these old plane models. So cool. I think that's the mall, just this little loop here, but it's a lot of cool stuff. Nice to catch a break from the uh, from the street. 
some old antique weapons here. Revolvers and knives and swords and stuff. Interesting. Old watches. How antique are these watches? That's the question. Well, these, these are pretty antique. These are old pocket watches. Cool. All right, well. We saw it, we saw the antique mall. We saw an adorable little dog, look at him. Look how adorable. Anyway, let's keep going. Let's get back out to the street. Let's keep walking. We're gonna head all the way up to Plaza de Mayo. Plaza de Mayo uh, is up here like, I don't know, it's probably like 10 more blocks from here. So, got a ways to go. And uh, if we see interesting stuff, we'll check it out for sure. Oh, no gracias. I think um, one thing though that I would truly like to find is a, uh, is a bathroom. I am starting to seriously regret not finding the bathroom in, uh, in the indoor market. One thing to mention, uh, while uh, I believe Defensa Street here is closed off to uh, car traffic, the rest of the streets around here are not. So, uh, lo siento, be careful. Be careful, don't, don't, uh, don't F-A-F-O, you know what I mean? Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Don't get run over. All right. This street is packed. Packed with people. But there is a lot of cool stuff that people are selling. Hand handcrafted stuff. Knit uh, little little knit toys. Watches and bracelets, jewelry, artwork, craft work. People selling mates. Of course, gotta get your mate. We have a whole video about sharing about mate. Which we tried the last time we were here in Argentina. We bought ourselves a mate. And we tried sherba mate. It was good. It was very good. Actually, check out that video. Jewelry, toys, all kinds of stuff, man. They're selling everything on here. Handmade hats. Now, obviously, if you're coming to the market and you're planning to buy any of this stuff, I would highly recommend bringing cash with you. Um, Mercado Pago and uh, payment through with credit cards is becoming more widespread here in Argentina, but cash is still king. Like, let's be honest, especially for some of the smaller vendors here, um, cash, is, cash is king. Not only that, but if you pay cash, you'll usually get a discount. People selling jewelry, hats and scarves and incense. Up here across uh, Avenida Belgrano, about three blocks away now from Plaza de Mayo. And uh, the street gets narrower, so the stalls sort of like close in a little bit more. So it's even tighter in here. Like if you're claustrophobic, honestly, this is probably not what you want to do on a Sunday. I'm, I or I fortunately am not claustrophobic. Oh wow. Knives, anyone? But if you were claustrophobic, this would not be uh, this would not be the place you'd want to go. Still, there is a lot of really cool stuff here. If you're looking for a souvenir, like an interesting souvenir from your trip to Buenos Aires, and you happen to come, uh, your trip happens to land on a Sunday, at least part of your trip, come down here, like come to the uh, San Telmo market and come check out the, uh, the street fair here. Because you'll definitely find, you'll definitely find something. That's for sure. Whatever it is you're into, you'll probably find it here. 
Another thing I would say, if you come into the market here and you're gonna walk around the streets of San Telmo in general, um, make sure you wear comfortable shoes because all the streets are cobblestone like that. And uh, if you're wearing uncomfortable shoes or like if you're wearing he high heels or something, uh, I wouldn't mess around on these cobblestone streets with that. You're going to trip and fall and eat shit or if you're wearing uncomfortable shoes, you're just gonna like ruin your back and your knees after walking around on these cobblestone streets for hours and hours with uncomfortable shoes. This of course, if you are smart about vacationing and you're walking around a lot anyway, I hope you have comfortable shoes to begin with, but definitely make sure you have them if you're coming here to walk around in the, uh, the streets of San Telmo for the market on Sunday. There's literally a dude walking down the street, the pedestrian street, with a giant speaker on his back and he's playing copyright and music. So I'm talking over him for the last uh, length of the walk here because if I don't talk constantly then there is a chance that this video is going to get a copyright claim or potentially a copyright strike because He's playing like uh, 80s uh, music from the United States on a speaker that's literally strapped to his back. Uh, and you can probably still hear it in the background, but hopefully if I keep talking over it, the uh, YouTube uh, sensor bots will not notice what's going on and they won't be able to tell that this guy is walking down the street destroying my video. Anyway, I'm not too worried about it. I should... Anyway, we're close to uh, Plaza de Mayo anyway. We're at the end of this shopping street here. We've seen a lot of very cool little souvenirs and artisan arts and crafts and things that you can buy here in the San Telmo street market. And uh, we saw, look, we saw the uh, indoor market, saw how crowded it gets. See how crowded the street gets here too. And uh, normally I'm not much for things like this, these kinds of like very crowded touristy things. But this was something that I regretted not doing the last time we were here in Buenos Aires. And now that we are here once again, right here on the beautiful Plaza de Mayo, here coming out to Buenos Aires once again, here on the beautiful Plaza de Mayo. Uh, I'm glad that we did this. Honestly, I'm glad uh, I'm glad we went to the San Delmo market on a Sunday. It's busiest day to see what it's like to uh, you know to go to the place and 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 you know sit elbow to elbow with people at the Choripan, the Choripaneria, which by the way, I haven't really talked about this, but that Choripan was so good. I'm not going to lie. Look, I've had a lot of Choripanes, okay? I've been to Argentina now twice. Um, and when you're in Argentina, you're going to eat Choripan because it's delicious. It's a delicious sausage on like a nice, hearty, delicious piece of bread, like a roll. And uh, you're going to eat it. You are. And if you don't, I feel sorry for you. I really do. Uh, but that place was really good. One of the best Choripanes I've probably had in my life. And I'm a big fan of uh, sausage on bread. I am... As some people know who watch these videos, I am from the city of Chicago in Illinois in the United States. And Chicago, Illinois is a city that is known for sausage because there are a lot of uh, Italian people in Chicago. There are a lot of Polish people in Chicago. Uh, a lot of good uh, sausage cultures uh, in Chicago. So you get good sausage pretty much everywhere. And sausage on a bun is... Uh, is a pretty universal thing, right? I feel like a lot of countries have some some version, their own version of sausage on bread. But man, I gotta say, and this is gonna be controversial coming from Chicago, but I think the choripan, when done well, a simple choripan with some chimichurri on a good roll, a good bun, that might be my favorite sausage on bread. It really might be, and that one was really, really good not gonna lie the choripan was nice and spicy the uh, bread was very fresh they had it like uh, the chimichurri was like very delicious they had some like garlic butter situation which they had buttered the bread with 
we got a beer of course too and like there's nothing that pairs so well with a beer as like sausage on bread <sighs> man that was really good a lot of times you go to very touristy places that have food and that are sort of like famous for their food you know and it doesn't live up it doesn't live up to the hype but uh that did that chori pan was delicious anyway i think we should end the video here because i think we've seen what we wanted to see we're back here in beautiful plaza de mayo even though it's a cloudy day today it's nice to be back here we've done a lot of videos where we've come through here through plaza de mayo both in our our previous stay here and our current stay here in Argentina and what better place to end the video than uh, than right here now honestly um, this is gonna be one of the final few videos here in Buenos Aires we are getting kind of close to uh, to the end of our stay in Buenos Aires so uh, I'm looking forward to going on moving on to a new city here in Argentina but um, I am gonna miss uh, I am gonna miss Buenos Aires I mean uh, that's the thing is I really really love this city I'm not gonna lie and uh, when whenever I leave I am sad but it makes me happy to know that Buenos Aires will be here waiting for whenever I decide to come back and visit again so I hope that you all enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one